In this video, we're going to be talking about understudies and what they are. I'm thrilled to introduce my first ever guest on the channel. This is someone who I was at drama school with and we've worked together professionally. He's an actor and a filmmaker, and he's also worked as an understudy. His name is Jonathan Davenport. Hello, Jonathan. How are you doing? Hello, Alex. You all right? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm, I'm very well. Thank you very much. Yeah. So um, I thought we could have a quick chat um, about being an understudy because I've worked as one, you've worked as one, and I really wanted to do a video about what it's like to be one. So what is an understudy, Jonna? An understudy is an actor who has been cast in a role in a play uh, specifically to cover the principal actor should they not be able to go on stage for whatever reason that might be. And that could cover anything from illness to um, a, a prearranged commitment at the start of their contract or, or any number of opportunities. So an understudy is on hand at all times and has learnt the part word for word, move for move, and is ready to perform it at a moment's notice. You've worked as an understudy. Um, how do you get a job as an understudy? Right. Uh, I'm going to start you off by saying that my example might not be the best example in this instance, because what got me into the room was a little bit of who you know. My other job, my my day job, is as a wedding videographer. And uh, I happened to book a client in my business who was getting married. And uh, naturally, that's why you book a wedding video. And um, And she turned out to be the associate director of... And inspector calls, got the video done and sent it off. And um, and she emailed back going, oh, yeah, I love the love the video. We had such a special wedding day. It was so wonderful. By the way, you mentioned you were an actor. Are you free next Tuesday at 10 a.m.? Because we have a slot available for an understudy role. She sent me the sides. It was auditioning for it. the understudy part that I was playing was for two roles, covering two roles. And so she sent me sides for each of those. It's no different in audition for an understudy as it is for a principal role. You you learn them as well as you can. Um, you dig into the text as much as you can. You get everything out of it. It was one round and, um, and I left. And a couple of weeks later, she called up and said, uh, we'd love to have you on board. Fantastic. That's that's interesting that it was it was only one audition because obviously some play, some parts you audition so there's several rounds. But... Yeah, apparently they'd been having quite some trouble getting people. That's one of the things with understudying as well is because a lot of people would naturally rather be playing a part in the play, um, and so won't put themselves on the understudy circuit for fear of being the just the understudy it's just just language i deplore anyway because there's a lot to be gained from being an understudy as as i'm sure we'll talk about and what would you say what would you say some of the the challenges of being an understudy are kind of on what i was just saying about the mentality going in to being an understudy is that you, you're an actor you've trained to be an actor and you come in and you've still got to be ready to go, game ready, at a moment's notice at any time. So the kind of mental tennis match that goes on with you as an understudy is, um, it takes a lot of getting used to. Um, I'm, I'm sure you know, you you spent some time as an understudy as well, didn't you? Yeah, I think it's that it's that fine balance, isn't it? About, like you say, of being, of being ready to go at a moment's notice, but also... You know, you can't you can't live your your whole life like that because you just you work yourself into a massive panic attack every time. Yeah, anyone I spoke to, um, you know, get the get the job, and you tell your family, "Oh, this is what I'm going to be doing." And it was a nine month tour, so it was going to take up a lot of my year. I'm going to be away around the UK, and uh, naturally, the very first thing that everyone says is, "So you're gonna you're gonna push him down the stairs then, so you can get on," and you're like, "Nope." Nope, that's definitely not... That's definitely frowned upon. Yeah, it's a frowned upon in the theatre world. But, you know, you do have a natural affinity to... When you're in a theatre space and you're working every day, going into a theatre to do a show, to feel like you're the actor going in to play the part. And But, you know, you want the show to go well and you want everything to happen as planned. And so if that happens, you're kicking back in the in the dressing room with a constant mindset of... If this is tonight, am I ready? Yeah. If if it's if it's going to be tonight, am I ready? And if you 
can answer that honestly, yes, then you're doing a job well. And if, if you go, oh, I'm really not sure about scene three, what my blocking is for that bit, then you go and you rehearse that and you be ready because that's your duty as, as understudy to be there at a moment's notice yeah and and obviously there are some drawbacks you're not maybe not acting every night you know you're not getting that rush yeah. you're not you're not kind of practicing your craft all the time but for any young actor or anyone that would maybe not know about the, uh, what an understudy is what would you say are some of the some of the positives like some of so what are some of the things that having done it you go oh actually that was a really useful experience because x y and z so what are some of the positives of being an understudy on a production well, for me, a lot, a lot of the positives came from the fact that this was my first, uh, first opportunity as an understudy, and this was my first step into learning about that environment and the sort of your place within the company. And uh, yeah, there was there was <laughs> one very early on in the rehearsal process because naturally, as well, you come into the rehearsal process a lot later than the principal cast, so they'd all been going for two weeks before. The four understudies that were in the show uh, stepped into the room and uh, I had visions in my head of what I'd been used to up until now in my career of, um, you know, everyone chipping in and um, and ideas being chucked around and that kind of environment. And I walked in and everyone was super friendly and wonderful professionals, but there was a table of four chairs at the back of the rehearsal room. And they went, if you just sit yourself there, I'm like, OK, and that's it. That's your understudy uh, sort of rehearsal period, principal rehearsal period, is to sit and watch the rehearsals going on. And again, that attitude that I was used to of the sort of ensemble, everyone chipping chipping in. Uh, I remember one occasion quite early on when the director is trying to figure out a particular bit of blocking. I can't really remember what happened, but I think he was going, oh, Blah, 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 blah. and then there was a, a, a gap. And I said, well, what if you went around the front of the table instead of the back or something? And the room stopped and everyone was looking between me and the director and back to me and the director, like, what's going to happen? And I was just nonplussed. I was like, what's going on? And then the sort of assistant director leaned over and went, just, um, you know, if you've got anything you want to, to, to add, maybe run it by me first before. Oh, wow. Before okay. Talking to the director. And uh, so I was a bit like, OK, this is, um, you know, obviously the bigger scale production. This is a very tightly wound working machine and there are you know very clear defined parts in it and and i quickly learnt that ethos and obviously no one had any animosity or anything it wasn't tense it was just a bit like okay this is how it works i hadn't got quite used to that and so as a learning curve it was great it was foundational for me it's really interesting isn't it because i i similarly one of my big first gigs was working on a show that had been running for a long time like an inspector call so it's it's really interesting going into that environment when it's a revival, when everything's been worked out, and it's it's very the rehearsal process isn't about putting it on putting it on its feet and creating it for the first time. It's it like you say, it's a really well working machine, and you as a new understudy, as a new person into that process, you have to find your place and slot in and just be part yeah. of it. Yeah. You say that, and that was a positive, even though that happened in rehearsal and there was a sort of a, a slightly unexpected reaction. Actually, that was a really interesting learning curve for you for going, oh, oh, that's, yeah, I haven't been in this environment yeah, before. Yeah, because that was the moment I realised I have stepped up in my career. You know, I have gone from one sort of level of theatre, which offered very different things and was very formative in, in one area, this stepped into a new level, literally a, a number one level is as the style of tour is known, playing to bigger houses, bigger theatres, and you've got, you've got a team of people to do the get in and get out and everything like that. And I guess it's almost more, more professional as well, because you because whereas before you've been kind of collaborating and working together as, as an ensemble, whereas this this is we're right like you say right in at the top level and it's going oh actually this is my role you get to focus solely on what you've got into it to do and whilst i am um, i absolutely love edinburgh i love the fringe and i love chipping in and making stuff happen and going oh we need this costume or oh, i think i've got one of those back there and blah 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 all that kind of stuff i love that but it was really good to step into a job where i was like okay i am actor understudy that's my role other people 
are employed to do the things that we would stress about before. And so that's a, that's a real positive for being an understudy. And then on, on the slightly more sort of practical side of things, if, like me, you're an actor um, with a, a side job, a side business um, that you can work at, you are a professional working actor. You can feel as such in a professional working theatrical environment, but still sort out everything else in your life at the same time. No, I, th- I totally agree with that. I think that it's it's really useful. I wrote a play and I was man- I managed to R&D, research and develop and, cr- and develop a whole project during my time as an understudy. So I I totally agree with you there. That's it's one of that's one of the, one of the the big perks is that you're you you're working in a theatre, you're working professionally, you're being paid to be an actor, but it also means that you can balance other bits and pieces and it means that you can look into other avenues and explore other skills and develop those skills during yeah. that time yeah yeah um naturally in the sort of first rehearsals that's not a, a thing you know i was i was like 100 percent on everything i'd got learned down pat just wondered if you could talk a little bit about the rehearsal process and obviously every rehearsal process for understudies is slightly different like you were coming into a revival so you weren't there for the first couple of weeks and then you joined and you could the parts had been put on its feet I've worked in processes that are similar but also I've been there from the, the start what, what what's it like you know what what is that process like how much time do you get on your feet in the rehearsal room and how when you move into the theatre how often do you run the piece do you get to go on the stage so I I had friends who had been on the West End in shows like The Mousetrap and um, musicals as well. The Commitments was one. And funnily enough, these friends were with me when I got the call saying, you got the part. And I asked this question to them. I said, what, you know, what did the understudies get in terms of rehearsals on, on your shows? And they went, nothing. I said, really? It's like, well, not nothing, nothing. But like you'd sit at the back of the rehearsal room and study the people that you're there to cover. Um, like a hawk and you just whenever the director changed something or said oh can you move this way instead of that way or you know gave any kind of note on performance or inflection or anything you write it down and that's that's a key part of the rehearsals I guess isn't it constantly making notes recording kind of everything that's happening yeah you've just got to I mean I I as well was you know leaving my phone on the front of the desk recorded a voice note at the beginning of the first full length run through they did and got the play in audio form and then every day on the train into rehearsals I'd play the play from start to finish on the journey in and the journey out yeah that's great the challenge for me is that I generally tend to learn lines in quite a kinetic way I link intentions to movements and I link words specific words to that intention and so the physical act links up with the verbal act and that's kind of what locks in the lines for me that was taken away from me in the rehearsal period because I was just sat watching the principals so I had to learn to kind of learn in a new way because once every Friday the principal cast would have a half day in this rehearsal hall that we had at which point the assistant director got up and we four understudies went to work and did a half day's rehearsal on a Friday evening which when I told these these friends of mine they, they said, oh, well, you're really lucky with that one because not many understudies get time in the space stood up going through their part. The difficulty there is that quite a few of us were understudying for two different roles. So we always had to have a reader and then like halfway through, we'd have to switch and go, oh, I'm, I'm going to do I'm going to do Gerald now. I did Eric before, but I'm going to do Gerald now. So that was a very, very interesting process. It was such a learning curve. Yeah. And really fun as well, because you're... You're not just concentrating on the one role either. You're getting to play and getting to to flip things around and do play two parts. It's a really good way of kind of broadening your craft, isn't it? Like you say, it's 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 such a a mental test of not only remembering the lines, the moves, but also doing all of those different characters. So you have all of these maps in your head, and then, like you say, that's great that you had a half day rehearsal with the assistant director. Um, because that's one of the key roles of an assistant director, isn't it? To work with the understudies and work with the chorus or the ensemble to sort of get, make sure they're all up to speed. And just chopping and changing between them, that must be 
I I I worked on a show before where I was eight characters. No. So there was one male there was, there was one male understudy and there's one female understudy. So between us we had the whole play. So a line run for us would be we sit down and we walk and talk through the whole play together, which was incredibly confusing. So it's kind of like a swing, really. Yeah, that that was that was very much like a like a swing. Um but yeah, I, what, what, on the subject of that, of what, a swing or an understudy, what what's your understanding, or what do you, what can you tell us about the di- the different types of understudy? There I think- are loads of different names that what I think essentially boil down to three different types. So there's understudy, standby, and swing, or sometimes alternate as well, and it it really depends on on what additional responsibilities you have. So uh, a standby essentially. Uh, is you're there to cover one person. And this is usually the lead role. And you turn up, and if the lead role goes on, you sit in your dressing room, and that's your job done. Um, Usually, if the second half goes up, okay, you wait 10 minutes and you can actually go home after that. Because the thinking is, is that if the lead's unlikely to go off in the second half of the play. Yes, yes, exactly. And so I was an understudy for two roles so i think i I believe that's kind of the difference between standby understudy and just understudy is that you know you i i was covering for two roles there was a in inspector calls there's a cast of six and there were four understudies so two of us were playing two roles Uh, what i was also doing though was uh was additional supernumerary responsibilities so um like in in films you have extras background artists in in uh in the theatre, we have supernumeraries, and so there's a there's one scene in the second half of an inspector calls where a group come in to um, essentially act as court and jury to the the action that's happening on stage, and so they come and they stand and they observe the scene and they present this beautiful like tableau image of all these people gathered around. Those supernumeraries, because we we're on tour, were gathered from the local sort of Amdram companies and local theatre oh. groups. Oh, okay. So it ch- that, that group changed every week yeah. or every venue on the uh, tour. So one of the, my, my responsibilities was to, kind of like the assistant director who wasn't with us on the road, was to rehearse in the supernumeraries and, and be director for them each week. Oh, wow. That's brilliant. So it meant a little bit more on the pay packet at the end of the week, which was lovely. But the real benefit was I got to put on another hat and be, be a director for, for half an hour in the technical rehearsal before going on that evening. And did, and before you started the the gig, before you started the job, did you know about that? Were you expecting to do that? No, that, that that actually came in later. It was our company manager, Brad, who, um, who would do this, but, uh, slowly he was picking up the jobs left, right and centre, his utter machine of a of a company manager and would do so much. And in the end, um, it just seemed sensible that I was doing this, all this action with the supernumeraries. And, uh, and because you knew it really well. And I knew the track as well. I'd been doing it for months anyway. Yeah, what, what, explain what you mean by, by track. What, what does that mean? So track refers a little bit more to your physical A to B point as, as a as an actor or like your journey yeah is that is that right? my yeah. journey was start upstage right in the wings come on to downstage center move to stage left do this business here pick up that prop move upstage interact with this actor you know and then you and again back to recording absolutely everything um that's that's your track and it's literally like a train on tracks going a prescribed route around the stage and that includes, you know, your dialogue as well. But it's it's known as your track, you know, rather than your part is the character you're playing. Your track is the physical action that you do in that part. And something like a, like a swing on a musical. Yes. So uh, I mean, musicals. We, we we haven't done many musicals, I don't think. But what's your <laughs> what's your understanding of like a sw- of of what is a swing? In so a yeah, the 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 final one is the swing, where it's an understudy for many roles. Musicals especially, which have big group scenes, um, they would be available at a moment's notice to fill in for any number of that ensemble at any point. Because usually within the ensemble is the understudy for the lead. So it might be that one of the leads get falls ill or has a commitment or a funeral or something to go to. 
They have to leave the show for a night. The ensemble understudy steps up to play them and a swing comes in to take their place in the ensemble. And the swing will often, uh, going back to that idea of tracks, a swing will often have memorised many tracks. Like 12, 14 different tracks, which, yeah. Which is something that I, you know, I talk about knowing several parts, but like you say, four, maybe 14 parts, something like that, like some swings on musicals. There are universal swings as well. What's, what's that? I just heard of universal understudies that have learnt tracks from multiple shows who are, you know, currently an understudy for this, but can remember their track from that, and one for Hamilton, one for fame, one for everything else. And so they just get called up and going, oh, we see that you were this part a year ago. Can you come in and do it tomorrow? And that's a really, that's a really, really unique thing. I mean, I think it, it would be quite rare to be happening on tour, but especially in London in the West End. Yeah. To be to be called back. But again, what a, what an amazing opportunity and a thing that you might have just finished a contract and somebody might you might just get that call going hey you worked on this six months ago a year ago we're desperate the covers are off the leads off could you come in and and cover this and it's going back to that fulfilling part of being an understudy is knowing that you are there to save a production in a lot of cases if depending on the part that you're there to cover for and the, the last minute nature of the whole thing, if you're not there, then the production stops and they've lost an entire night's takings from, from their box office and had to refund, you know, possibly over a thousand tickets. And I think that's, that's, that's something that's worth mentioning, isn't it? Is that one of the reasons why understudies, swings, covers are so essential, it's so the show must go on. But the reason the show must go on is so that they don't have to cancel it and refund because... We know theatre's expensive to put on, and if you, if a, a show has to cancel, the producer, the the company that is producing the show, has to refund thousands upon thousands of pounds. You can take a massive hit on this, yeah, yeah. Talk to me about. We've both worked on tours that have gone around the UK for. I think mine was for nine months. I think yours was was yours nine months as well. It was going to be nine months. Uh, obviously, come March. That got oh, cut of course. short. Yeah, uh, we, of course. We had about three months left to go. So we did, yeah, about six overall. I guess one of the challenges is, is is how do you motivate yourself on a tour if you're not playing the part every night, if you're not doing something that you trained really hard for? Yeah, how do you keep yourself going on tour? Well, the, the thing I kept reminding myself is that I had trained really hard for this. You trained really hard to be an actor and to perform the part, and to characterise a part really well, interpret a text really well. You're still doing all of that. The different challenge that an understudy gets is to, one, have to do all of this exactly the same work that the principal cast has to put into their characterization, do it again over for however many multiple roles that you're covering, but then also store it and keep it. And like we say, like this whole thing has been about, have it ready to go to pull out the bag at five minutes notice and suddenly you're having first night nerves when everyone else has been on tour for four months and so it's a challenge for them uh, an exciting challenge for them to accommodate for that and it's a real challenge for you to have to completely cool as a cucumber step in and just do exactly the same performance that you've been watching for the past four months when i was working on the woman in black in london I went on for the first time. And like you say about that five minutes notice, it wasn't quite five minutes, but it was 20 minutes notice. And uh, the, I mean, act, that, the act, that is... Yeah, it, oh. it was huge. <laughs> yeah, and the, the actor the actor that, I'd, um, that I was going on with, because Woman in Black's a two-hander, we'd, we'd had done it together, but not in front of an audience before. We'd, done, we'd rehearsed together. We'd done like an understudy run through. But it was, it was the first time that we'd done it just on a stage for over a year and it was 20 minutes company manager knocked on the door and said Alex you're on tonight and it was it was totally that it was it was scary but but like you said I think that's really interesting what you say about the nerves because there was no thinking time there was no time to you know let nerves get the better and you can't just go I can't do it you've just got to slot into that machine yeah I think it's worth noting as well I think that one of the real positives and one of the real lovely things about being an understudy, if and when you go on, is how supportive the rest of the company are. Yeah. And how and how everyone is gunning for you. 
how everyone is so supportive because they can, you know, they want you to do well. And not just them as well, because one thing I really wanted to touch upon was the audience, because everyone as an understudy has that fear that on the night you go on, there'll be an announcement at the beginning saying, tonight, the part of Eric Bowling will be played by Jonathan Davenport. And you just, you're dreading hearing that, oh, we've got the understudy. I found, because I've, I've also been in an audience when a theatre, when an announcement's come on, that oh, the understudy's playing, and I've gone, amazing, great, because you're going to get the best damn performance that they can give, because it's their night to give the best damn performance that they can give. The pressure, the adrenaline, it's all there for them, so they're going to absolutely act their socks off this Exactly, part. so you're probably going to get the best performance out of them than they're ever you're ever going to see. Do you have any kind of interesting anecdotal or any first-hand experience of when actors went on did it go well did it go badly was it when understudies you know, it, went on yeah when understudy was there is there anything that's kind of interesting or weird or wonderful happened anytime i've seen an understudy go on which is relatively few but you can tell the camaraderie that's happening on stage to get this understudy through the show that they've not done before particularly if it's the first time they've had to go on. With long-running musicals, it might be a monthly occurrence that that they just get asked to come on just for... It's in the Leeds contract that they get a performance off every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, so, and, and, and obviously on, on, say, like a West End production, something that I didn't know about until very late is that people often have allocated holiday because obviously it's a, if, it's a, if, it's, if it's a 12-month contract, those actors, like any job, you're entitled to a certain amount of holiday. So sometimes an understudy, a cover, will know in advance, oh, I'm on for those four shows in March or I've got those, I'm doing that Saturday performance a few months ahead. Yeah, so my, my friend who was in the commitments for a couple of years had that and had a week's holiday at one point and, uh, and his understudy went on for a week. We didn't get an occasion where someone had to go off during our show, but we did do an understudy run. Just to clarify, if you don't know what that is, that's all of the understudies do their own performance for an invited guest audience. As I said before, we had four understudies covering six parts, so two of the principal actors had to remain. We had to choose which of our two parts that we were going to do, and the other actor would very graciously, and above and beyond call, um, stay and do another performance for an invited audience of our friends and families. And for the understudies it's the one and only guaranteed time to rehearse your part in front of a live reacting audience and that's not always uh, a thing like you say some some productions they they kind of allocate that and say yep this is when we're doing it sometimes it's a little bit unwritten and like you say the understudies and the company have to kind of talk and go is there a way that we can do an understudy run can we squeeze one in as a matinee or an extra yeah, performance yeah because it's not a case of oh it's all right the principal actors don't need to be there we can just do it whenever we want the crew and the the you know the bits of the cast that do remain and all of the technical team have to do another show on top of their already contracted eight shows a week and the theatre needs to open up and the, the front of house staff and the managers need to be present and the cleaners and everyone has to be present because you've asked for your understudy run to happen. So, you know, there's a lot involved for a company to make sure this happens. So you should really make the most of it if you get one. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a, it's it's sort of like a token of respect, isn't it? From the from yeah. the production, from the producers going, you know, you've worked really hard as an understudy. We know you haven't played it. So we're going to sort of thank you or honour you by putting in, putting in uh, an extra performance and where you can invite your friends and family and it's the sort of public understudy performance. And likewise, as the performer, one of, one of your responsibilities as an understudy is to return that to them and go, thank you, I will give you the best performance I can and I will, I will make sure this, this understudy run goes really smoothly. And uh, it was, a, it was a, uh, an, a moment I'll remember for a long time before our understudy it was at the new wimbledon theater uh in the, we started in september and our run was in the end of november and um and all four of us were just shaking like leaves beforehand because this is our first and possibly only chance to play these roles to wear these costumes to say these lines and um and so tensions were very high and just before the show i remember gathering everyone around and just getting into a circle and going okay guys whatever happens you know, we're a team. If somebody 
you know, misses a line here or, or skips a bit there or whatever. We don't hold it against anyone. We just keep the show going. We keep the train on the tracks. And suddenly everyone was a bit like, yeah, yeah, we are all on the same team. Yeah, we're, we're going to get through this. And so that was an important moment to have. And that's, again, what people are looking for in an understudy is that calming presence because you're there. If you're especially if you're stepping up to your role, you're there because something has gone wrong. And so it's up to you to be the calming, reassuring presence to go, you know, hold my drink. I got this. <laughs> um, and for them to go, they've got this. That's fine. Show as normal, please. And I think finally, John, I think what would you suggest are some kind of really quick fire, like do's and don'ts for an understudy? Let's imagine that someone's watching this who has is interested in being an understudy or is maybe been offered a job as an understudy or wants to know more about it. What are your kind of do's and don'ts? What should you do? What shouldn't you do as an understudy on a production? Well, a lot of them are going to tie up exactly the do's and don'ts as if you were playing the main part. So do learn your part thoroughly beginning to end every which way, but up, you know, um, don't take it for granted. Don't, don't assume that you're, any lesser part of the production than anyone else yeah what about you i think i think do take notes we've talked about that write down as much as you can i think also do take in advantage of those other opportunities you talk you talked about assisting and working with the supernumeraries like that's brilliant when i was on tour i did some education workshops with schools that came in so i led those for the production which was really good so if there's any other little um strings to your bow that 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 come up I yeah, think definitely use them and take advantage of every spare moment you get to rehearse. Take advantage of the Friday afternoons where the space is free to go and ask the stage manager if you you're allowed on stage to to go over your track, even if you're on your own. I think don't be um, don't be too needy and high maintenance about it. Don't be sort of fussy about rehearsing or get get you know getting on or Yeah, we all hate the divas in the in the in the principal roles anyway. There's no room for divaism in in an understudy role. You're you're there to do you're there to reassure them, not to cause problems for them. And so yeah. those you know even as small as like, you know, being a bit grumpy about the the state of your dressing room and things like that you know you go on tour to some old old buildings they're you know they're not always going to be in tip-top condition you just always do be respectful of the places you go to and respectful to the in-house staff yeah i think it's it's also it's let the work do the talking isn't it it's all yes you know it's not about talking yourself up or moaning or anything like that it's if you get that opportunity to do a, a run through in front of the director, in front of the company manager, in front of the assistant director. That's where it's your let your work do the talking. So you know those lines inside out. You know that blocking. You've noticed anything that the actor's done or, or maybe the performance has evolved or changed slightly. And you've you've picked up on that those fine, fine details that the director will see and go, that's really impressive because that person has got incredible attention to detail and they care about getting it right and slotting it. Like on the run-throughs and rehearsals and the director changes some note with the principal cast but hasn't passed that down to the assistant director to pass on to you. If you were there, if, you, if you've if you taken that note and you've rehearsed it in yourself and you come to your understudy rehearsal and it's already done for them, then they know that they can trust you with that and they know that you are taking this very seriously and they go, wow, that that's that's someone we could hire again. And also, you never know if this tour goes into next year you could be asked to step up and be the actor for the next year that's not going to happen if you're just oh i'm only the understudy in this one you know what's you know there's no point in trying as hard and pretty much the majority of my work as an understudy got me for by being hard working and i think being good at it got me more work when that when that production was revived i got called and going do you want to continue working because we like working with you so that's i think invaluable and i think people like you, like you said earlier, like some people might look down on it or go, oh, you know, you're not really the proper actor or you're not the proper part. People build careers. People have people pay mortgages. People have lives that are based around that. So actually, it's a really unique skill set. And if you've got those skills and if you can find that enjoyment and that thrill, then that can pay your bills <laughs> and can pay your rent and can keep you surviving. Because as we know, 
working in theatre, working in the arts is really difficult. It's very competitive. Yeah. It's very, it's very That's hard. That's what you keep reminding yourself as an understudy when you're sat in your dressing room. And yes, there are moments where you can hear through the tannoy the lines that you know so well, but you may never speak going, oh, if only I was on stage. But the point is you're working in a theatre of all places as an actor in an understudy role because you have been deemed trustworthy, reliable, hardworking enough to be able to do not only what the actor does, what the, the, uh, what you do as an actor in every role, but often twice over and with no rehearsals. That's, that's so much more impressive. Let's wrap it up there, Jonna. Thank you ever so much for talking to me and to the Apex Drama Tools viewers. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me as your inaugural guest. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you've liked this video, please hit that like button and do subscribe to the channel as well. Check out these other videos that I've put up on screen because I think you'll like them. All the best. <laughs>